We're going to look at neutralization reactions today and some pH molarity stuff. There you go. So neutralizations are when um, hydronium ions and hydroxide ions from the acid and base that's reacting together formed water molecules. So the uh, a hydronium or a proton from the acid reacts with the hydroxide from the base and would produce water. And then the anion and cation from the acid and base combine together to form a salt. So, in, so you'd have an acid and a base reacting to form salt and water. So an example here, HCl is our acid plus our base is sodium hydroxide. And it yields sodium chloride and the hydrogen, the proton from HCl and the hydroxide from the sodium hydroxide combine to form water. And it's, at the end, it would be a neutral solution. <coughs> This is another example, hydrochloric acid plus calcium hydroxide. Now, in this case, we're going to have to balance the equation. That's why we had the coefficients. So we'd form two water molecules, not just one. Um, and then calcium chloride would be your salt. So what would be the neutralization reactions for these uh, equations. So what are we going to get, basically? So we have HCl plus aluminum hydroxide. And what does that yield? OK, hold on. My pen's not ready. Okay, so we yield AlCl. Is that the right formula? Aluminum has what charge? 3 plus and chloride is negative 1. So we'd have AlCl3 plus H2O. And then you have to check to see if it's balanced. How many oxygens do we have on this side? 3. Um, how many chlorines on each side? We need a three here, won't we, to balance out the chlorines? So now we have six hydrogens and three oxygens. So if we put a three here, we'd be balanced. <coughs> okay, how about this reaction? What are we going to get for our products? Yeah, you keep the phosphate group together. I'm going to write up below it. So we'd have Ba, PO4. Do we need to add any exponents or subscripts? Barium has a 2 plus charge, so we put a 2 here. Phosphate has a charge? Negative 3, so we need a 3 down here. So it should be Ba3, PO4, 2. Plus what? H2O. Is it balanced? Um, we probably need a 2 here to balance out the phosphates. Three bariums on this side, so we need a 3 here. And now let's check our um, we have 6 plus 6, 12. Is that right? 12 oxygens. And six ox or twelve hydrogens and six oxygens. So I'll put a six there. Don't we have six oxygens on this side? Because there's two OH groups, so there's two here times the three would be six oxygens. So now we have six oxygens on this side. The phosphate, we don't have to consider that oxygen because we balanced the phosphate as its own group.
Okay, so neutralization reactions, you're just adding acid base together, getting the water and a salt. We will be doing a labs, a titration, we get to titrations, this is the kind of reaction that we'll be dealing with, a neutralization reaction. Okay, water itself can self-ionize, meaning that water can ionize and form the hydrogen, the proton, and the hydroxide. So two water molecules can produce the hydronium ion and a hot hydroxide ion by the transfer of a proton. So pure water, if there's nothing else in it, can even form the um, hydronium and hydroxide. But water, pure water, is neutral, we know. So the concentrations of the two um, com of the two hydronium and the hydroxide are equal to each other since it's a neutral compound and those are 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. So whenever you see this little bracket around a compound that means concentration of. So the concentration of hydronium is equal to the concentration of hydroxide in pure water and both of those are equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. Okay. Um, and actually, in any solution that's dissolved in water, this can be <coughs> happening. But usually, we ignore the self-ionization of water just because it's so, so small of a concentration that it doesn't affect pH much at all. Okay, so since we just talked about concentrations, we have a new unit that we haven't talked about before, and that is molarity. That big M means molarity, and it's a concentration unit, and is the number of moles of solute in one liter of solution. So a molar, or molarity, is equal to moles per liter. So whenever you see a big M, that means moles per liter. So when we saw 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar, that means there's 1 times 10 to the negative 7th moles in one liter of solution. That's what that big M means. And we will be using that kind of convert, and we need to be able to do that. So let's do a couple practice problems. So if you have 3.5 liters of solution that contains 90 grams of sodium chloride, what's the molarity of that solution? So if we want molarity, molarity was what? Moles per liter. Do we know moles? No, but we could find it if we know grams and we know it's sodium chloride. Do we know liters? Yes, we know 3.5 liters. So we need to change the 90 grams into moles first. Um, sodium chloride is NaCl. So one mole of NaCl Chlorine is 35.45 and sodium is 23. So 58.45. And after you divide, 1.54. Now that is moles. So to get molarity, what do we need to do? We take moles divided by liters, so we want to divide the number of moles by the liters that we have, which is 3.5. So we'll divide by 3.5 liters, 0.44. And so it's moles per liter, which we just use oops, a big M as our units, molar. <coughs> this time, on this next one, we, have, we know the molarity, and we have 0.8 liters of that solution, and we want to know how many moles of hydrochloric acid is in that solution. So we can do this by using, if molar molarity is equal to moles per liter, we can use this as an equation, kind of. 
So if we know it's 0.5 molar, that's equal to, we don't know how many moles, that's what we're looking for, over 0.8 liters. So we just multiply those two, what'd you get, 0.4? Okay. So we'd have 0.4 moles of HCl in that solution. Now if the question were asked to, for grams, what would we have to do from there? Change it to grams. Question so far on using the molarity unit? Last one. To produce 40 grams of silver chromate, you need at least 23.4 grams of <laughs> potassium chromate in a solution as a reactant. And all you have on hand is 5 liters of a 6 molar potassium chromate solution. What volume of the solution is needed to give you the 23.4 potassium chromate needed for the reaction? So we need to figure out how much of that 5 liter solution are we going to need to get 23.4 grams? And if we know the molarity, molarity is equal to moles per liter. Do we need to know that 5 liters? There's some extra excess information in here, because are we going to use all 5 liters? So does it matter that we know 5 liters? No. As long as when we calculate the volume, it isn't over 5 liters. We don't want to use over 5 liters. What's the other piece of information that's extra? <coughs> no, we're going to use the 6 molar because we're going to use this equation. And that'll be in the 6 molar. Right. It doesn't matter that we need 40 grams of silver chromate. We're just trying to get the 23.4 grams of potassium chromate. So if we're using this equation, or using the molarity unit, molarity is equal moles over liter. We know molarity is 6.0. Do we know moles? Of, can we find moles of how much we need? Right, we have 23.4 grams. We need 23.4 grams. Let's just change that into moles. It's K to CRO4. Chromium is 51. Well, 52. 194. 194 grams per one mole. So how many moles do we need? How many moles of potassium chromate? Okay, so we need 0.121 moles. So we know we have a 6 liter or 6 molar solution and we need 0.121 moles, so how many liters do we need to use to get the 0.121 moles? That's what we're going to look for. We're going to look for that liters. So to solve this equation, what do you do? Right, because we would multiply each side by L first, cancel those out. So then you'd have to divide by 6, both sides. So 0 0.121 divided by 6 is 0 0.02 liters. So you'd have to measure out 0 0.02 liters to get the right amount of potassium chromate. Okay, so now that we know a little more about the unit of molarity, we can use that to find what's called the ion product of water. The ion product of water is just Kw. That's 
the ion product of water is taking is the product of the molar concentrations of hydronium and hydroxide. So you're multiplying hydronium and hydroxide. And we already saw that the concentrations for both of those was 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. So when you multiply those two together, you get 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, and that is the Kw value. So the ion product of water is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. And we will be using that number to calculate hydronium and hydroxide concentrations if they're not equal to each other. And we can also use that to find one or the other and then compare them. If they're both equal to each other, if the concentrations are equal to each other, the solution's neutral. If we have more hydronium than hydroxide, then the solution is acidic. But if we have more hydroxide than hydronium, then it is basic. So we can use this to find concentrations of ions. So remember that Kw is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. And that is equal to hydronium times hydroxide concentrations. So if they want to know the concentration of hydroxide ions in a solution where the hydro hydrogen ion concentration is 1.3 molar, We know that this is going to be 1.3, and we're going to solve for hydroxide. So 1 times 10 to the negative 14 is equal to 1.3 OH. So we're going to divide, take 1 times 10 to the negative 14 and divide by 1.3. So then we know the hydroxide concentration would be Remember when we use exponents, try to put that in parentheses. Seven point eight, negative fourteen, fifteen. Okay. What would be our units? If we're looking at concentration. Molarity. So we'll just put a big M. Okay, on this one, what is the hydronium concentration of a solution if the hydroxide concentration is 5 times 10 to the negative 8th. Same way though, we, we use Kw, so 10 to the negative 14th. This time we're looking for the hydronium concentration, but we know the hydroxide concentration is 5 times 10 to the negative 8th. So our hydronium concentration would be <coughs> negative 23rd. Are we getting number? Is anyone else checking this? It seems like I'm going to check that one. put that whole thing in parentheses. Like that whole top number, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. I got 2 times 10 to the negative 7th. So count, like it'd be point with six zeros to 2. that top one the right then yeah 
top one's okay. 7.7. 7. Yeah. But All right, so make sure the KW value, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, the whole thing probably needs to be in the parentheses. Yeah, this one is going to be a little different. I'm going to make a new page here. 1 times 10 to the negative 4th of H and O3. One times ten to the negative fourth, right? Okay. So when we have HNO3, um, nitric acid is one of our strong acids, so it's going to completely ionize into this. Just split the ions apart. Remember our six strong acids we talked about yesterday? The bases. So if we, if it's strong acid, all of this is going to, at the end, there's not going to be any. So what we use sometimes is called the ice method, but, so initially we have this concentration and then initially we don't have any of the ions, but after this ionizes, we lose all of this here, and we would gain how much? Since it's a one-to-one -one ratio, our volume isn't changing, so really we can use it like mole-to-mole. -mole. So it's the same concentration. So at equilibrium, that's what this means. We have zero here. We have one times ten to the negative fourth here, and one times ten to the negative fourth here. So what is our hydronium concentration? What's our concentration of hydronium? Mm -hmm. 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. So now if we want to find hydroxide concentration, that would be Kw divided by the hydronium concentration. One times ten to the negative tenth. <coughs> we should be putting our units there. So any questions on that? So the only thing is that even though we have all of this compound, it's going to completely ionize, so the concentrations are equal for the hydronium. Okay, one other calculation is something that you guys are probably more familiar with is the pH scale on determining whether it's acidic or basic. How do you know, using the pH scale, how do you know something's acidic? What's neutral? Seven. So if it's acidic, it, the pH has to be below seven. If it's basic, it would be above seven. So it's a measure. We use the hydronium concentration, and it indicates the acidity of solution. It usually ranges from zero to 14. There are instances where you can go below zero and above 14, but most of the time it's from zero to 14. And to find the pH, of a solution, you take the negative log of your hydronium concentration. So you have to know the negative uh, the hydronium concentration first. Uh, 
So if the solution is neutral, the concentrations are equal to each other. So the hydronium concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, and the pH is 7. If it's acidic, which concentration is greater? Hydronium or hydroxide? Hydronium is greater. Hydronium is acidic. Hydroxide is a base. So hydronium concentration is greater than hydroxide, which means the hydronium, or yeah, the hydronium concentration is greater than one times ten to the negative seventh, which makes the pH less than seven. Basic, which one? Which concentration is larger? Hydronium or hydroxide? Hydroxide is larger for a base which means the hydronium concentration is less than 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, and the pH will be greater than 7. No, we will. We have that on the next slide. So as the pH goes up, the hydronium concentration goes down. So for, the, for your equations that you have, that you need to write down, the pH is equal to the negative log of the hydronium concentration. pH is equal to the negative log. pH equals negative log of the hydronium concentration. So it would be, write it right here. There's one equation. Now if we know the pH, but we want to know the hydronium concentration, the opposite of log is taking something times 10 to the whatever that would be. So you take hydronium is equal to 10 to the negative pH. Now one thing, you cannot have decimals in your exponent, so you'd actually type that into your calculator, push enter, and whatever number it gives you. It would be hydronium concentration. And you can also, there is also a pOH value. And you would find that the same way you find the pH, you take the negative log of hydroxide to get the pOH. You would do the same if you wanted to find the hydronium con or the hydroxide concentration. Based on the pOH, you would take it 10 to the negative pOH. And then if you take the pH plus pOH and add them together, they'll always equal 14. Here's some examples of some solutions. Um, lemon juice is acidic, vinegar, carbonated beverages, basic end, ammonia, bleach, cleaning solutions a lot of times. So are these acidic or basic? HCl, pH 1.5, be acidic, yes, because the pH is less than 7. Pancreatic fluid. Is this concentration greater than or less than 1 times 10 to the negative 7th? Less than, which means that this is low. Yep, so it is basic. Or we could find the pH. So we could take the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 8th. There's going to be two different ways you can solve almost all these problems. 8, so if the pH is equal to 8, we also know that this would be basic. It says Sprite has a pH of 3, acidic. If you have a pH of 7, neutral. Okay, here if we have the hydroxide concentration is 3 times 10 to the negative 10. Do you guys like comparing concentrations or pHs? I'm guessing pH would be easier. So let's find the pH of that solution. 
since it's hydroxide concentration, let's find POH. So it's the negative log of 3 times 10 to the negative 10th. Nine point five. That's POH. How pH plus POH is equal to what? Fourteen. So if we take fourteen minus nine point five, we get the pH. Twelve point five? Four. Oh, four point five. Yeah, that makes more sense. Four point five. So is that acidic, basic, or neutral? Acidic. And last one, we know the hydronium concentration, so if we want to find the pH, take the negative log of that. So is that acidic, basic, or neutral? Questions on using those? Right, that's POH. So if you want, you're probably more familiar with the pH scale, so I would change it into pH to know whether it's acidic, basic, or neutral. Okay, one more problem for the day. Uh, rainwater collected in a certain region of the northeastern United States on a particular day was 4.82. So the pH is equal to 4.82. They want to know what the hydronium <coughs> concentration is. No, not quite. Um, there's a couple different ways we could solve for this. So let's do it both ways so that way you have the choice of what you like better. We can do um, 1 times, never mind, there's only really one way. This will be the easiest way. I, if they would find the OH concentration, there'd be a couple ways. 1 times 10 to the negative 4.82, but we can't leave the 4.82 in the exponent. So actually, type that into your calculator see what it gives you, and that would be your hydronium concentration. Tomorrow, I think we will finish up the problems.